friends, welcome back to the shop. If this is your first time here, I'm Dana. I'm Art. And I see, I don't know about you, but I see some really weird stuff when I'm driving. And it, it's crazy. People disobeying traffic laws. And in general, I just became a little bit more paranoid after buying my new Hyundai that uh, I was gonna get into an accident and not be able to have any sort of backup or proof that it wasn't my fault. So Art did the best thing ever and we got Minji her first present. Well, <laughs> her second present. Her second present, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what we are installing today is the Viofo two-channel dash cam. I wanna go through the whole features catalog that comes along with this and there are so many different dash cam options out there but we ended up going with this one really for a, a couple of main reasons one we didn't need three channels two channels was enough for the front and the rear and then the HD capabilities that this has both during the day as well as nighttime and watching a number of different review uh, videos on them I thought it was perfect for what we wanted and the price point was exactly where we wanted it to be as well. So excited to get this installed and go ahead and get it tested out on our own runs and who knows. Maybe we can post up some crazy stuff later. Possibly. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so follow along. We hope you get some value out of this, but I'm ready to get this thing started and get it installed. Yes. All right. All right, let's quickly walk through all the hardware that we have. So we have the A139 two channel and in it, instructions, you have your front camera We have our rear camera, we have our SD card reader and several stickies for adhering to the windshield. Back window we have multiple cables, we have a polarizing filter and they give you a panel removal tool which we may very well be using in order to get behind some of the panels to run the wires. So that's it for the kit itself. In addition to that, I purchased the dash cam hardwire kit because having wires run across your dash is just ugly and sometimes it could be a safety hazard. So when you can hardwire it safely, always recommend you do that, whether it's a dash cam or a radar detector or anything else, always best to hardwire. So purchased that, purchased a 256 gig high endurance card. This is from SanDisk and also something that'll work really, really well. And it's actually made for dash cams. And in addition to that, purchased a mini fuse tap kit. Uh, what this will actually end up doing is allowing us to tap into one of the already used fuses in the fuse box just by removing it, putting it inside this tap kit so we don't lose the protection and we safely tap into the power. So all of these we purchased from Amazon and I'll actually post the links to each of those in the description box. So we're gonna, we're gonna tackle the rear window first. So let's go ahead and get into that. And one thing that I did prior to actually putting this camera up is go ahead and plug in the front camera, connect both cameras, make sure the main unit powers on, make sure that it does recognize both channels and it's recording to avoid running wires just to find out that something is not working right. Went ahead and mounted the rear camera right here. Uh, this is a good spot for it. It's out of the way from getting hit and we're going to run our first wire right behind this trim piece. So we're going to use the included little spudger tool, trim removal tool, 
and see if we can actually get that free. Incredibly simple. Pop in our first wire there. And what we're going to do is actually run it through this wire line into the headliner area. Now, we'll, what I recommend that we do is always, if you can, leave a, little, leave a little extra cable in there in the event that you have to pull something after we run it. So we'll take some zip strips and tie that up here shortly. Now, if you don't have a little wire fishing piece very similar to this. This is great for these type of channels in order to be able to pull the wire through with the bends that they have. Push that through. Our end is there. And I'll take a little bit of tape Tape it on there. Yeah, let me go ahead and try to snake this on through. we go. Patience is the key.
and just work our grommets back in. And from here, we're going to want to pull off our weather seal. Caution on the amount of glue that may be in there. Here we want to go ahead and feed this wire down into our headliner. We're going to take a little fishing wire here and pull it back out. place perfect all right from here what we're gonna do is run this cable along the headliner and because we're gonna run it along the headliner and run it along the top edge of the headliner on the driver's side of the car we're gonna need to pull some of these panels away as well so just a little bit of controlled force as I like to call it to get the panel out. We're gonna run this through there for now. Show you what we're going to do is to avoid removing this pillar cover because it does have the airbag in there you can use just your finger to push the wire through or you can use one of these little pry tools and go ahead and pull the panel away so you can push the cable down into it where it's secure and hidden and we'll do that all the way along this way until we get to the weather seal which we'll be able to just pull away and continue to run the line along the headliner. So our weather seal is pulled down around the rear passenger seat door access so we can run along the headliner over to the B pillar cover up over to the driver's side where we'll pull the weather stripping down all the way down the A pillar across to the top of the windshield. All right, ran it around the door seal up in the headliner, back behind the A-pillar cover, and we're gonna run it under the headliner by the windshield. Now, they've done a great job because this front little strip on all the protective covering actually pops right out. So we'll have access to our wire right here without taking off a whole lot. The excess we're gonna roll up, zip tie, and then put up into the headliner. Now placement in this particular model is gonna be a little bit tougher because we have this big piece of plastic up here and doesn't give a whole lot of availability on where to place the dash cam. So we're going to attempt to actually adhere it to that plastic. See how strong this adhesive tape is. All right, next big bunch of wires is the actual hard wire kit. So we're going to run the power cable it's right here the same way that we just ran the data cable from the rear camera to the front. 
right along through the wire channel, up along the headliner, back down the A-pillar, and then back down this way to go behind the dash. All right, so we ran our wire around the A-pillar cover. We have it here. We pulled off the weather stripping around the door. And now we're going to go ahead and run this straight on down back to the back of the dash. Now we're going to remove this side panel right here. You can take the included uh, panel trim tool and there is a little hole right here that you can push it in and then slide and slowly start to pull away. Now also what I recommend is having some larger trim removal tools. Kits that they sell online are fantastic. I'll put a link for that. So that way you have a greater area to be able to get this into and pop the clips where a small one really doesn't give you the leverage. And we just got one little hook down here on the bottom that is on there. And there we go. Now that'll give us access to the fuse panel that we need and everywhere in order to mount the hardwire kit. Now we'll go ahead and run those cables through here so we can go ahead and button this area back up. All right, so we're using our micro tap-in fuse kit. I'll post the link to that kit in the description box. And your power wire is gonna go into a power constant fuse. And then the accessory wire is going to go into a fuse that only gets power when accessory is on or the car is running. You need to make sure that you do have the initial fuse that you're pulling out as well as a secondary fuse in the tap kit to close the circuit. For the ground, on the newer vehicles, finding a good solid ground gets harder and harder because either bolts are welded in or everything is just connected to plastic. So you have to go on a little bit of an egg hunt. This one is at the top end of the steering box. Easily being able to take off the 10 millimeter bolt and sliding in the wire to have a good connection. All right, so the only thing left now is just some wire management to clean this mess up, get it up out of the way so nothing hits it. And then we'll do some testing of the unit itself. All right, we have the unit mounted to the actual plastic cover just as I initially wanted to. However, what we discovered was the sticky pad that comes on the unit just was not gripping. So what we did is a little hack of using the Scotch heavy duty fasteners. Be sure these are the ones that are that state three times stronger than Velcro. Just cut a little piece to fit the back of the unit and it's working just fine now. Thank you. 
electrical modifications that I've ever done on any of our vehicles. That was fast. It was incredibly fast and although you just see an edited version of this, <laughs> uh, it, being able to move the panels away and get the wire to tracking compared to many other things that I've done on other cars, I was incredibly pleased with it and it was just simple. All of the kits to include the fuse tap wire kit, the hardwire dash cam kit, all of it just made it incredibly easy to be able to do at just a basic level of knowledge and experience at installing these type of things. You could easily do it yourself. So hopefully this got some value from you if you're looking at installing a dash cam for yourself. Let us know your thoughts, but until next week's episode, thank you once again for following along. We really do appreciate you. Take care and stay safe. Yes. Bye.